Yay, we're live now. So, hello everyone. Welcome to our second Korean bootcamp live stream. This time we have Joey Youngbuck Saltonpole with us. Hey, Joey. Hello, Karina. How are you doing there? And hello, everyone, of course. I'm doing great. How are you? Um, well, it's all good here. We're just curious how the stream's going because that's why we had a little bit of delay on our side, right? All right. Uh, actually, scrims went really well. We actually, I'm not going to say who we scrimmed, but we went 6 0 yes, today. So. Okay, yeah. well, <laughs> 6 0 so, is something that Carlos was uh, posting on our last <laughs> live stream. Yeah. So th that's the team goal now. Yeah, we're just, uh, it was a simulation of the group stage today. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're probably com gonna come back to that. We have a very, very big amount of questions, so I'm just gonna jump in to write that. Um, what do you think was the team's strength at last MSI, and do you think they uh, you can reproduce this performance at Worlds? Well, I think our biggest strength was that we knew how to play around tempo much better than other teams, which gave us a way better mid to early game, uh, mid to late game. And that reflected in a lot of our drafts, which were not early game focused. Um, we were looking for a lot of mid to late game drafts because we thought other teams were not playing well enough for our macro to use their strong early leads, like strong early game composition or whatever, to close out games. Um, so I think we banked really hard on that. And that was our biggest strength to the MSI. So do you think that's going to be something that's going to help out at Worlds for us? Um, I think a lot of the top teams uh, have similar macro to uh, as us. It's just who makes the first mistake uh, when it comes to teams like SKT or Samsung that's in our group. It's like ev I think everyone understands the same concepts. It's just who makes the first mistake and then that usually ends up in the loss. And that it's also something at MSI that SKT showed that they were way more consistent and don't make the, the first mistake. Um, I'm going to jump into one of the Reddit questions. Um, only one feeder was asking a controversial question. Is boot camping really worth? Since Western team started the boot camping thing in Korea three years ago, the gap seems to be wider than ever. I don't know if this is due to Korea evolving much faster than the rest of the world, or Korean teams actually benefiting from playing against other teams to detect possible cheese picks or strategies. I think it depends on the team. So for us, I think it's definitely worth it because we get really good scrim partners. A lot of good teams want to scrim us. And we are aware of what teams are actually just trying to scout or will probably leak our picks. So uh, we adjust our training to that. Um, however, knowing that, for example, Splice went uh, to a bootcamp last year, but they got very bad scrim partners for the majority of the bootcamp. So I don't think it's worth it for them. However, if they stay behind in Europe, they don't have any team to practice against uh, other than maybe... Uh, a Turkish team or uh, a Russian team. So they're pretty much forced to come with us to the bootcamp. And I also think this year it may be difficult for Fnatic and uh, Misfits to get very good scrims. So I think if you're the top team in your region, it's definitely worth bootcamping because you get a lot of good practice and new scrim partners. So you learn to play a lot of different styles. However, if you're uh, maybe a second place or third place team as a Western team, uh, it might be really difficult and not as worth. Okay, so before we proceed with our questions, I have to do a small introduction of our partners, Space Safeguard, with who are we doing all this Korean live stream thingy. Um, for the people who tuned in on Facebook and are watching, be active, ask in the comments the questions, send them to Joey, I will be reading them as soon as we finish with the other questions. And the best question is going to be... Um, Oh my god, that's what I'm saying. So the people who are asking the best questions are going to get some uh, rewards, which are pins from PaySafeCard. Basically, it's 10 euro vouchers, which you can pay with in all the different shops, like, for example, Riot, League of Legends, and the client store. You can buy our team emotes, icons. So yeah, be active. Um, PaySafeCard is working in 45 countries. We have a pinned comment. You can check if you are from one of those 45 countries. If not, unfortunately, we won't be able to give you that pin. But if you are, feel free to ask anything you'd like. Our coach, Joey. Yeah, so <laughs> the break is over. <laughs> um, let's jump into the next one. Um, obviously, everyone knows that best of ones were sort of a weak point for G2. And players have mentioned it many times. And But Duffman said that we are doing better. And Shurima Lonely Bird is asking, 
How can you tell that the team is making improvement in best of one? Have the scrims really been a reliable way to analyze that? Looking back at MSI when you guys played against SKT, how do you think G2's mac macro compares to Samsung? I think it's two different questions. Right, so the best of one thing, I think you can't really analyze it from scrims, but you analyze it from the approach that you take. And one big reason why I think we were really bad at best of ones uh, last year at Worlds was because in the bootcamp, we, okay, so the, the entire year we played towards mid lane and bot lane. And then we spent the entire bootcamp playing right, towards so top lane with uh, a lot of Elise Jays, Elise Rarington, and very snowbally champions. And so, first of all, we completely changed our style. And second of all, we would get such huge leads in, I think, about three quarters of the games that our opponents would uh, forfeit the games about 10 to 15 minutes in and wouldn't let us actually play out the game. So, when we went on stage and we thought this was the right meta to play, um, we actually had to finish out games and our opponents couldn't forfeit, of course, and it turned out that we could not use a top lane lead to uh, win the game. Um, what's different di this year is that we know what our style is, better, like what we can always fall back on. And so even if maybe the meta shifts towards one lane, we might just stick to what we know. And we know that we can always just play our style fine, which we have now identified as just pick a good bot lane, pick a fine mid lane, or a strong 2v2 for the mid lane. And our top lane can adjust like 2v2, he can play carries if he want to. Um, but we always have like a really dependable uh, play style to, that we, we can use in best of ones, which is just play around mid lane or bot lane. Okay. And the second part, of, well, the second question of the same person was, uh, looking back at the Maasai, when you guys played against this Kitty, how do you think G2's macro compares to Samsung? Well, I, I think that both SKT, Samsung and us have uh, know the same concepts of macro. And I think SKT is way more consistent than either of us. So I would say that G2 and Samsung might be very even. I'm, I'm not sure. It's a lot about making the first mistake, making the first uh, wrong lane assignment or not recognizing your tempo or playing towards your tempo and then just losing vision on the map. Um, so I think uh, I would say we're pretty even. So it's hard to predict what's going to happen if this game, if whatever we play, uh, if we have a 50-50 team comp against them and we go into the late game, I don't know who's going to win on the macro. I think uh, it will just be like someone getting caught out randomly that will probably determine the game. Do you think that... Uh... After the group draw, we've been sort of underestimated, or it's better to be in the position where no one is actually hyping up the fact that G2 is going to win the group, except for Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little bit of both. I, I do think we're underestimated, and I think people are really quick to forget that um, we were in a group with seed ones of every region, and we made it out of the group, even though it wasn't the most spectacular uh, performance, which was MSI. Um, and we've actually had a really good playoff. Like our regular split wasn't looking that very well, but we really redeemed ourselves in the playoffs, and we actually look like a very strong team. So I think people are definitely underestimating us, especially when they say that RNG should be better than us. I think that's a little bit unfair. I'm not going to say that we are better than them. I, I well, actually, I am going to say that I think we are better than RNG. But I think it's very strange that a lot of analysts just assume that we may not make it out of groups. Um, and what was the second question? Yeah, that that was it. That was already the second. Okay. So you're good. You're good. Um, Leo, the Leo Coleman, he was also with us during the Dove stream. So hey, he's asking um, that Perks was sick during his last stream. Are any other players sick, and does it impact their performance in games? Do they play less than normal because of it? Well, we don't play less, but it does. Uh, it can impact the quality if someone loses focus because he's sneezing or uh, just not feeling well, feeling a he having a headache or something would happen to Luca. He had a headache and uh, he had to sneeze a bit and here and there. So there were moments in the scrims where he lost focus, but it's not like it's a virus that lasts for two or three weeks. So it's just maybe one or two days where maybe he doesn't have as much impact on the game as he would like. But overall, it, I don't think it really hurts the entire bootcamp. Are the guys, like right now, all healthy? Everyone is fine. <laughs> yeah, everyone is fine. Like, um, I think we learned a lot from the last bootcamp, actually, because we were in an area where there wasn't a lot of food. Uh, like, the first food, so we were living off of fried chicken back then. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really sad, actually. Um, 
But now there's like we go for a team breakfast out in in uh, like restaurants where we always have like rice and meat and stuff like a very healthy food. And uh, Weld and I both brought a lot of vitamins over. We got some vitamin D, multivitamins. So just to make sure that the players are actually living healthy, so that they don't feel bad at the end of the boot camp, which did happen last year, where people were eating so bad that they started to feel bad about themselves. Understood. Well, so- sounds good. And it sounds also that we are improving every year and getting more yeah. conscious. Um, okay, let's uh, jump to... A, there was a question by Peter Jacobs, 93. Uh, he was asking, how difficult is it for you to keep your players passionate and hard working? Surely with all your success, it's easy to get complacent and not to want to work as hard. Well, that's exactly what happened, I think, this split. I think we got a little bit complacent after MSI. So on, pl- on top of having the little break bet- from the Koreans, I also think there was a little bit of complacency and just the expectation that in a few weeks we would be at the top. However, it turned out that after a few weeks we were not at the top and at Rift Rivals we bumped very hard. So I think that kind of loss, the loss at Rift Rivals, is really something that uh, lit the fire back on. And having a big team discussion uh, that we had back then, that which we've been discussing on streams before, uh, and in media, that that really like it turned the fire back on. So it's it's been really easy ever since then. Okay. Um, another question. You mentioned something. Uh, well, not something. You were saying that you actually consider it stronger than RNG. And there is from Anon, Anonymous 10, the question, considering that LPL teams have recently started working together more in their research practice for international tournaments, has there been any talk about collaborating between the European squads? European teams are rather unlikely to face each other at Worlds anyway. Do you think that could be helpful or it's not worth it? Um, yeah, I've actually reached out to the coaches of Fnatic and Misfits last night just to discuss meta with each other because if you have like three teams discussing meta then I think we can get way further and we can prepare each other and make sure that we don't come in with wrong meta so we discuss like what do you pick into this what do you pick into that what are your priorities in first picks and uh, what what do you see banned in your scrims a lot and these kind of things uh, also I think but this is kind of something that you learn that we learned from last uh, worlds is that a lot of teams leak information to teams from their uh, their own region. So in the week leading up to our actual group stage matches, we will be scrimming a lot of European teams and maybe teams in, from regions that we are not going to face. So it could be NA in our case. And I think that's really helpful for us because then we can actually hide all our picks and we can discuss meta and discuss strategy with other coaches and just help each other. Well, but this is, as I understand from my experience, as the first year when something like this is happening. That is very correct, yeah. But at the same time, it's all based, like, you know, on the goodwill, let's say so, because, I mean, I don't want to have any conspiracy theories, but it works only as long as everyone is, like, you know, in that, invested, saying, like, right. fighting for But I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think any one of us have any bad will towards the other team, so I think it's pretty safe, you know, unless maybe Dylan is suddenly a immortal spy. You know, you never know. So, mm-hmm. but I, I think we're pretty safe. So, I mean, just out, out of this, I want to ask: Do you feel that Europe as a region is in a better position than NA as a region at Worlds this year? Well, realistically, t- like NA, TSM, and Immortals have way easier groups than the EU teams. Um, like, if we were in Group B or D, we would be very happy. So, realistically, NA should make it further into the tournament. Um, however, we can we can be EU's backbone, and if we make it through groups and get into the best of five stage, I think there's a lot of teams that we can beat. Um, there was a question I'm just uh, trying to find. Um, someone was asking, um, quoting Dove. Uh, from our stream because he said that you were sort of happy to get in that group C Um, people were asking why and what I actually your thoughts behind what are your expectations and how do you feel if we get cloud nine there right so uh, my first thought was okay we can beat both teams like they're not easy teams but we can beat them and then after re-watching all the groups I was like oh yeah shit we actually are in the hardest group um, 
However, if you look back at last year, we had a relatively easy group. Like we had a wildcard team and we had a third place NA team. And there was very, I guess there was a very different kind of pressure on us because we were not allowed to fail. And it's a very different pressure to what we have this time where apparently a lot of people think that it's okay for us to fail. So I think a little bit less pressure on us can be really good. But also internally for our team, having the pressure of having to play good teams is really beneficial to making sure that our scrims are very efficient. Understood. Um, Philip um, Cern Jack on Facebook was asking, how far do you think you can get in the tournament? Do you think you could take down Longju or SKT in best of five? Um, they are provoking you. <laughs> well, no, I think it's a very fair question. I think if we make it into quarters, it would it could depend on who we draw because I do think that SKT is just very very good at best of five. So um, I don't know how they're going to grow into the tournament and how they adjust it to the patch. I think we can beat a lot of teams. I think we can beat every non-Korean team in a best of five right now, and I think we've showcased that at MSI. So I would say we can make it into quarters. I don't know as what seed. Um, I think both seed one and seed two can be realistic, and then it will depend a lot on who we draw. Because if you draw SKT, you're just going to have a very tough best of five. That's just how it is. And if you draw maybe Flash Wolves or TSM or Misfits, then you know you're a lot happier. And then you can actually aim for semifinals or finals. Um, Zacharias Linkwist Hansen is asking, Hey Joey, I hope you and the team are doing well and getting some good training during your boot camp. After Longju defeated SKT during the LCK final, do you believe that they are a real contender to win Worlds this year? Also, do you think that the momentum going into Worlds from your strong performance during the playoffs will be an important factor for your performance during the tournament? I think Longju is definitely a contender. I mean, just beating SKT 3-1 means has to mean something, right? A team that cannot be beaten in best of five is suddenly beaten. Um, at the same time, from my own experience with a team, like having such a big loss for SKT is probably going to ignite a fire into them. Um, so it's, I'm just gonna say SKT is probably going to win if they face Longzhu in a best of five again. And what was the second question? Um, there was if the momentum gained from our playoffs run gonna help us perform at Worlds. I don't really think so. I think it's more about the boot camp. Like we won Europe, we left it behind us. Now we have completely different opponents and completely different styles that we're facing. So I think the, how the bootcamp will go will determine uh, how confident we are going into the group stage. Um, Fran was asking uh, another question. I don't know how aware you are of the play-in teams, but uh, he was asking, do you think any of the play-in teams will be able to get out of groups? Your predictions for play-ins. Well, I'm just going to go with the normal standard thing, which is World Elite, Fnatic, C9, and Hong Kong Attitude. Uh, we actually got the opportunity to scrim against Hong Kong Attitude, and they were pretty decent, so um, their hype is deserved. And I think if there's one offset, then it's probably going to be Gambit going over World Elite, maybe. But it's a bit of a long shot. I, I just saw on Twitter someone asking uh, if, if people um, believing in Gambit is some sort of old nostalgic feeling so <laughs> would you like to see old friends on stage yeah absolutely it would be great to have gambit in worlds like we wouldn't want to have such a big legacy team in there okay um i've got another question uh, like actually a bunch of questions i don't know how much you can tell about it but a lot of people were curious w with the eu format changes uh, what sort of changes are coming to the coaching perspective and the ex expansion? I don't know how much you can say, so feel free to say what do you know and yeah. I know as much as the other people know, sadly. So everything that's been thrown on Reddit is also everything I've been reading and know. So I don't know if there's much much to change. I guess what's going to change for coaches is that they're going to live in a different city probably. Like I don't think anything else is going to change. Okay. Um, we will see a lot more coaches, though, because, of course, there will be more leagues, so there will be more coaches, and that could be very good for the coaching market. Are you excited for more teams? Like, just the fact, uh, because there was another question asking, with the more teams, does it mean that we'll be able in Europe to foster more young talents? 
I, I think for the short term, it's probably not going to be very good, but it's a very good idea for the long term. I think if we can indeed foster the talent and just give every league a few years' time to actually build up a, a lot of decent teams. Because if you look at LCS right now, like at the current LCS, already the bottom teams are pretty bad. So imagine if you have a bottom team in, let's say, a Spanish league. That I don't know if I would want to watch it, but so I think it would need a few years before we actually get to foster all those talents. I must ask, who who was making jokes or poking you there? What's going on? Um, no, <laughs> Mitty was joking me about coaching markets. <laughs> oh, Mitty is gonna planning to expand it or what? <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, vote on Mitty for the fan vote so he can do an AMA too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What are they saying? Can hear. Ah, uh, he's laughing. Ah, okay. He wants he wants Luca to do it, I think. Oh, well, we'll see. Actually, the next question is. Um, can I interrupt you for a moment? Sure. Guys, can you leave some young yum chicken? <laughs> yeah, the young yum. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can we can continue. Oh, so you didn't have your dinner yet? No. Well, it it just arrived. So. Oh my God. Okay. We'll try. Not I'm, to I just I'm eyeing on it. <laughs> Okay, you just have to get some spears <laughs> and <laughs> throw. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so talking actually about the player vote and all that thing, that we had the question: Are there any plans to showcase tricks and expect personality a little bit more? So maybe in addition to that, because we both know that it was mostly due to a lack of English. Maybe you can tell yeah. how it's going. Well, maybe the people should vote on them. I've been telling G2 that they should uh, do a lot more with them. For a while now, so it's up to them because they just really love playing the game. It's a really Korean mindset. Just play the game. Don't do too many interviews or just show your face too much. Just try to improve as much as possible. So just vote on him, and then he will come sit here and he will answer your questions and be very funny. <laughs> <laughs> can Can you give your version on why we have a uh, one Sayan on the team right now? A what? Sayan, like the the hands here. Dragon Ball Z uh, reference? Uh, I don't know, he's just really crazy. So I guess he just wanted to go Super Saiyan for Worlds. Okay. <laughs> um, also, people have been asking, uh, are we ready and how do how well do we read the new patch, new meta? And uh, Paragon Saint was asking, do we have any off-meta picks or comms planned? Obviously, an agent by our opponents. Right. I, th I think our preparation is going very well. Uh, the read, so we thought we had a very strong read on the meta, but every now and then some team plays something very different, and then we have to react to it and uh, incorporate it into our team comps. Um, I guess I can say what it is. Like for example, since yesterday, our opponents have been playing a lot of Kogmo, which we hadn't seen before then. So now we're like, oh, um, now we need to start drafting pot lanes, keeping in mind that Kogmo is apparently a champion in some regions. Um, so that's something that suddenly can like throw you off. And so I think we have our style set, but and we have a good read on the meta, and we're still exploring some other things as well in the meantime. Okay, um, I have another question uh, from Isaac Mack. He is asking: Are there any teams from LPL and LMS that really impressed you in scrims? I forgot to answer a part of the question that I just remembered. And as far as cheese picks, oh yeah, I don't know what's considered cheese. I don't know what you want to expect, but I think there's not something super crazy. There's no Timos, no Shakos running around. And Everything no you see on Reddit, <laughs> well, is it cheese or is it not? Is it meta? Maybe it's meta. I can't say. Okay. All right. Well, it's pretty uh, obvious. I know that Trick was, uh, well, people know Trick was playing Ezreal Jungle when Zeno was streaming. So is <laughs> Yeah, we may or may not be trying it. That's, I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, what was the follow-up question? Um, are there any teams from LPL or LMS or end LMS that really impressed you in scrims? I think Flash Rules was quite impressive. They've always been a very good macro team and um, I just remember my bot lane saying afterwards that they were really happy that they were playing a very good bot lane for the first, or can I say first time in the bootcamp. Like, they actually felt like they were being put to the test and uh, there was almost no room for error, which they did experience in a lot of other, t other uh, teams. Uh, as for LPL, no, I'm not particularly um, impressed. Uh, we screened both EDG and Roll Elite. I wouldn't say they were bad at all. They were just very decent, and 
I'm just not sure if, how much they were scouting and hiding their own picks. So it's very difficult to tell from the, those scrims. Um, actually, I just want to repeat because I remember to Duffman there was a question from one of the viewers, which I find very interesting. Um, someone was asking, is it better to ha to scrim more scrim partners or to have more scrims with the better teams? Well, ideally you want to have like four or five scrim partners, especially in a, in a boot camp as long as this, so you can explore a lot of different play styles. Um, but scrim partner quality is very important, so you will always book good teams. And if you have to choose between scrimming a very good team again or a weaker team for the first time, you're probably just going to stick with what you know and just play that really good team again. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, Peter is asking, since there's a lot of talk about team scrimming, how important are the scrims? Are they much better than solo queue? Can too many scrims be a bad thing? No, I don't think it's a bad thing to have too many scrims. And... Like it's the it's the one moment in the day, like the six hours in the day, where the team gets together and gets to communicate and talk about the game, talk about how their champions interact with each other, talk about macro related things. Um, so it's extremely important. It's the backbone of any team. Um, I also was asking Chris, maybe you have more insights to that. Uh, so you said you've been in contact with European teams. Are our players hanging out with some of their buddies from other teams? No, we're actually uh, on our own in this hotel. The, I think I think that Misfits is in the hotel that we were in last year, so that's quite fun. Um, but we have a better hotel, so we're pretty happy here. We're in a really good area, especially compared to last year. Like We have restaurants all over the place and places to get coffee and drinks and shopping and everything, so we're in a really good area of the city. Good to hear. I'm glad. We're we expecting some karaoke session and some material for our social media. Well, not for me, but <laughs> well, you you know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a karaoke guy. Um, Lina is asking, um, how well do you think I you already adapted to the world's patch? Is Ardent Sensor still OP? Will we see a lot of Ardent Sensor supports? I think we adapted very well, uh, mainly because it was just two small patches since the finals. And as for Ardent Sensor, I think we will see a lot of it. But I don't know how high the priority of it will be. I think a lot of different teams have different reads on whether they want to play. Um, so there's two ways to go. You can play Arden Sensor, or you can usually play uh, bot lanes that allow your support to roam mid lane a lot until the enemies get Arden Sensor. So it's usually it's a real trade off of what you want. If you want to play more early game focused or a little bit mi more mid to late game focused, and different drafts, different times. Um, I have a question. What about perk spamming Cartus in solo queue non-stop? Cartus? Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't know about that. <laughs> I haven't seen it. He's probably just having fun. Okay. Um, Black Nick is asking, how do you feel about current world's format? Planes, groups, playoffs? Would you prefer double elimination similar to Dota TI? Well, I really hate best of one. Especially considering that you have an entire year build up towards a big tournament where the best teams come together and then in six games basically your entire year is determined or like a large part of it is determined. So I'm very anti best of one in terms of competitive integrity. However, I, I can understand that Riot does this for the storytelling. You know, it's really fun if uh, an Albus knocks Luna, beats Rock Tigers and uh, G2. So for the storytelling, it, it, it's fantastic. But for competitive integrity, I, I hate it. Um, I've got a fun question. Kitsuke Hell was asking, do you listen to Twice in Korea? <laughs> uh, no, I don't listen to Twice. Who? I heard it's a good group though. Who is there? That's Dayan. Oh, Dayan. Please show your, fa your face. They want you to show your face. Yeah. Please. He doesn't want. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Always funny. Okay. Yeah. Um, Oh, so, okay, I, I promise to leave out that uh, non-fun question which you already asked in your MA. Um, right, that one, yeah. <laughs> um, so, wait a second. Uh, Perk said, on, um, so, Kaint uh, was asking, Perk said on stream that he thought EU as whole was still behind the other regions. What's your personal take on that? I think there's a lot of truth to it. Um, 
especially if you look in the West, I think G2 is the best Western team. But I think TSM and Immortals and maybe if yeah, no, I think those two are probably better than Misfits and Fnatic by a decent amount. So I think the average level of NA is higher. I think the average level of EU is higher than LMS. And I don't really know how we stack up against uh, LPL. I think we have better macro, but they may have better individual players. Good. Um, I, I want to go on to a short pay safeguard break. So um, I, I just want to announce first pin winners. Um, so the technology of this whole thing is going to be the uh, same like the, during the first stream. I'm going to say the code word right now and mention your names, guys. I can also show the code, code word. It's kind of funny. And then you message G2 Esports on Facebook writing that word and I just ask you for more info. And if you happen to be from one of 45 countries where pay safeguard is being active, then you get a 10 euro or an equivalent pin. So, the code word is... Ocelot Scarf. And the winners so far are Philip Cernak, Fabio Valerio Romano, um, Zacharias Linquist Hansen, Isaac Mack, Peter Jones, and Lena Svart. I think we had a double check. Leo, we had you last time. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Everyone else who wants to get some more pins, please be active. Still can ask some questions. We're going to be live for another 10 or 15 minutes before Joey starves. And yeah, so be active. I'm going to pick another five or six. So let's go back to questions. Whew. Um, oh, okay. We have the question... Who would win the mid lane if G2 and SKT would face each other in another best of five? Lane Kingdom, baby. Well, Perks, of course. <laughs> There's no doubt. Okay. Um, one person asked, actually, I think it's it's a funny question, and I'm curious about the answer. What are league boot camps and what happens there? <laughs> well, you basically stuff uh, a group of players in a hotel room, and you have them play leak all day because they have nothing around them and that's a boot camp and that's what happens and a lot of laughing that's what happens too but that also happens in the gaming house at least with our team I wanted actually to ask because I know that there's always boot camps have some certain jokes inside stuff going on were there any good stories solo queue moments anything you can think of um, no? Oh yeah, there was a time where we went to a restaurant and Trick got flamed by the waitress for not grilling the, the, the meat properly enough. So she said, how can you cook like this? You will never get a girlfriend if you cook like this. I thought it was pretty funny to get told that by the waitress. <laughs> yeah. By a Korean waitress. Korean guy. Yeah, by a Korean waitress, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god, we really have to improve... By some old lady. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so what else? We Maybe for those who just joined a little bit later, um, because we had a many times repeating question, how how big are our chances getting out of groups? 80%. If I had to put in a percentage, I would say 80%. And I also think we make a chance at the first seat. Okay. Um, also, people were asking... Uh, um, wait a second. I'll, I'll find in a bit. No, there was a... The top lane meta is slowly switching to some carry champs like Jax, Jace, Fiora. Is Expect ready to this meta change or he is more comfortable with the split meta? I think he likes both metas very much. Um, so I think he will be ready. And I think every carry champion that be is being played is on our radar. And in a few days we scrim Longzu. So I guess we get to experience the true top lane carry uh, yeah, the true top lane carry experience, the full package. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that, and then we'll see if uh, Expect is actually ready. So, how how did that scrim go? <laughs> no, we 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 played them in a few days, so that's when oh, we will actually okay. get. That's no, we we'll, we'll see if it if it works for them. Okay, I'm gonna make myself a note to ask the player in our next live stream how did it go. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
and they will not be allowed to answer. Oh no. Sadly. Oh, Joey, you're you're fun killer. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, Turdy Martin is asking, uh, "Hi, Joey. Have you played the game yourself? Have you tried Korean solo queue?" I actually haven't tried it this year. Uh, because I want to put a lot of focus on watching our opponents, so I've just been watching lots of RNG and Samsung. Uh, and I, I did try it last year, and it was a lot of fun. And I think I got hard stuck somewhere in Platinum or something, and gave up after like 20 games. But it, it was a lot more fun than in Europe. Okay, um, there was one question, or maybe even few times, from Perks fans: Why he doesn't stream regularly? He doesn't stream regularly because he had he went, basically went from jet lag to being sick, and he's at a boot camp too, so he has his priority straight on uh, scrims and playing solo queue. Okay. Like actually solo queue to improve and not just to entertain. Um, Vetic was asking if you would be allowed to change two things, one in game and one outside the game before Worlds, what would it be? I would nerf Arden Sensor. <laughs> that's one. Does that count as in the game? Yes, that's in game. Okay, that what I only had to say one, right? Mm -hmm. And then one outside the game. Oof. I don't know. We have it pretty good here. I don't think I would have changed anything right now, really. I maybe improve the gym in the hotel, but even the hotel gym is like pretty really good for a hotel. Uh, a gym, hotel, hotel gym, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, you, yeah. You could push the cities you, where you're playing a little bit closer to each other. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And another question from the same guy. Why should he root for G2 during Worlds? Oh, that's such a tough question. Why G2? If you really think about it, why G2? I guess you just have to have a connection with the players or the staff or uh, or with Europe. Um, or maybe the way we try to play the game. Uh, we are the complete opposite of Unicorns. We don't try to play fun Fiesta games and make it the best, the most fun game to watch. We just try to be very precise and uh, play the game at, as perfect as possible. So if that's something you appreciate, then you should root for G2. So, so now we're perfectionists. We are the perfectionists, yeah. Um, wait a second. Um, oh, so Inigo Blue was asking, did the rest of the teams have changed their attitude or when playing against SKT after their defeat versus Longju? Uh, basically, if the viewpoint of SKT has changed. No, not at all. That's a very short answer, but no, not, not at all. So, if you were to name the world's best player, would it still be Faker? It would be Faker, yes. Can you explain, like, why is this, let's say, wh why he has uh, been holding this position for so strong and why, I mean, obviously all players always mention him and no one else, and why there's not even a close contestant? I think he has the best game sense of any mid laner or any player in the game. So, I think that's one of the things that allows him to play any champion, because if you have the correct game sense, then you don't always have to be the best mechanical player in every champion. So, yeah, it's game sense, reading the map, and he does it better than anyone else. It's that simple. Um, going into, I think, a few last questions. I really know that you're tired and it's late there. Uh, Rodrigo Salas was asking, greetings from Costa Rica. I want to know what has changed on the team from previous worlds to be confident of having better performance. So, at the start, I already mentioned that last year we played the entire year around mid and bot lane. And then in the bootcamp, we suddenly changed our style completely and went towards top lane. And right now, we've identified what we've been playing during this season. And we're just going to probably stick to that. Like, we're, that's our main style that we're going to use for best of one. So we should be way more consistent and we should, like, it's way easier to prepare for our opponents to just knowing that we're going to stick to our style and not conform to the other, play, other team styles. Well, just a question for me. Isn't it sort of risky, you know, to go for one certain style of play and, uh, I don't know, does it, it doesn't hinder the ability to adapt? Well, one style of play can have many different drafts, like, I can, we can do like 10, 15 completely different drafts, different champions, and play this similar style, so 
it's not like it's a one-sided style or anything, and it's not something that you can just abuse. It's not like, okay, if this guy doesn't win his lane, then the game is over. That's, that is what we're kind of avoiding. We're spreading the responsibility over the entire team and making it a real team game and not putting all the pressure on one person or two people to perform. And we can do that with a lot of drafts, and that's a style that's very consistent, uh, a style that SKT also likes to use because it's just... It's really easy for one person to underperform on a day, especially in a best of one. But if you have a style where other four people can pick them up, then there's no real problem. So this basically proves why people, let's say teams throwing all the resources to kill Faker and killing him a few times do, do not still win. <laughs> well, that's also because Faker is just really good. But it's, it's, it's part of it, yes. It's not that they make a draft that where Faker has to win his lane. They, they just don't do that. Okay. Um, Henrik was asking, um, do you agree on the current opinion that it's most likely that only one EU team will make it out of groups? Um, and also, do you agree with this opinion? Do you think it's G2? I agree with G2. And I think Misfits has a chance, a fair chance, uh, especially since it's best of ones. And I think Fnatic would also have a chance of getting second in Group B. Uh, actually in Group A too, so yeah, actually, no, they, they can get, Fnatic can get out of groups if they get into Group A or B, so which they will, so. I have a follow-up question uh, from Mario. Hi, Mario. <laughs> um, how many Western teams are going to make it out of groups this year, and which ones? G2 is going to make it out of groups. TSM is going to make it out of groups. Uh, Immortals is going to make it out of groups. And then Fnatic is going to make it out of groups. That's my prediction. But I think Misfits has a bigger chance than people give them. That, that I need to add. So that also was a question that someone asked Duffman. They were asking like if uh, Fnatic were underperforming uh, when they poorly played in playoffs against... Uh, and had to go through the gauntlet, or what was the case in your opinion? Um, yeah, it felt like it. It felt like they didn't draft very well against Misfits and just didn't play very well. I think in scrims they were honestly getting the better of us uh, almost every week. Like I don't think we won a single block against them in the last month leading up to the playoffs or in the playoffs. So seeing them lose to Misfits was both really funny and uh, painful because they were actually way better than that. Like they were actually consistently like going 3-2 against us in, on a day, or like it would be 3-3 or something like that. So they were looking really strong in, in scrims, and then they go on stage and they lost. So it was, I think they just had a very like a very bad day maybe, or maybe they just didn't prepare their drafts well enough. Maybe they were just looking too far ahead of themselves, and then Misfits just snapped them in their jaws. Understood. So I'd like to, before I announce the winners and <laughs> let you go eat, I have the last uh, funny question by... Turdy, sorry, I'm bad in pronouncing your name, Martin. Uh, how many clowns do we have on the team? Meaning, who is the funniest person on the team? Who are like the best jokers? Well, the biggest clown is our manager. <laughs> He's listening. Hey, Chris. Um, and then we have Dayan is the biggest clown among the players. And I guess Luca is also a bit of a clown, like a funny guy. Anything funny so, happening? So those are the biggest clowns. Um, not that I can think of the top of my head. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, Joey. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Give me a few minutes to announce the winners, and then I'll be letting uh -huh. you go. So, All right. guys who are watching the stream, once again, um, the key word, code word is Ocelot Scarf. Probably Carl is going to kill me for it. Um, Ocelot Scarf, send this uh, combination of words to G2 Esports Facebook via message. And the winners are, I'm going to read all the names, um, Fabio Valerio Romano, um, Philip Cernjak, I hope that you're going to share this with your brother Fran, I assume that's your brother or sister, sorry, uh, Zacharias Linkwist Hansen, Isaac Mack, Peter Jones, Lena Svart, Turdi Martin, Rodrigo Salas Hasson, and Henrik Diller. And if you happen to be of w from one of those 45 countries where PaySafeCard is working, then we're going to send you next week a nice pin for around 10 euro value. So, yeah, thanks everyone for joining in. Thank you, Joey, for finding time to do it. I know you guys are super busy there. Best of luck.
Good luck in that long Thank you very swim. much. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, in, enjoy your dinner, have some rest. The greetings to the team. Bye yeah, bye. thank you. And, uh, see you, everyone. Bye.